welcome to Kelly Keeps You in the Know. Get ready to be engaged, informed, and empowered to walk into your purpose. Welcome, 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 and thank you all so much for tuning in to this edition of Kelly Keeps You in the Know. I guess I should say Happy New Year to uh, my Covington, Kentucky family. Happy New Year. I have not been here in the studio all year long. And to God be the glory, uh, I am in remission from cancer. For those of you who have been wondering, where is Kelly? How is Kelly doing? Uh, I'm blessed beyond belief and just happy to be back in the studio with my executive producer. Uh, All too often, you have heard me uh, broadcasting from my car or broadcasting from work or broadcasting from the community, but I am here in the studio and I'm anxiously awaiting my lovely, lovely, lovely guest, author Bobby Michelle Bean. Now, author Bobby Michelle Bean will come in, but before she talks about what 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 she's doing in terms of her uh, writing endeavors, I want to give her an opportunity to talk about everything else that she's doing now. Bobby Michelle Bean, and most people now, I generally refer to her as Michelle. Michelle has been instrumental in creating an opportunity for uh, mothers, for for young women from the inner city to be able to possess the land. And the way that they possess the land is by purchasing homes. But again, I'm having author Bobby Michelle Bean in the studio. She should be here shortly. She'll talk about that, Uh, but I'm just really excited to be back on air and to continue to bring you news that will keep you inspired, encouraged, engaged, and empowered to walk in power towards your purpose. So for those of you who are joining me on Facebook Live, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to have you witness what I do here in the studio. And if you'd like to be a guest on Kelly Keeps You in the Know, uh, all you have to do is inbox me. Inbox me on Facebook uh, or send me an email to Kelly Price. Prather1 at gmail.com. That's kellyprather1 at gmail.com, and I will get you in the studio. Uh, the, the sole purpose of my radio and television broadcasting endeavors is to ensure that I give as many people who need a platform to tell their stories an opportunity to do so. All too often, small businesses, especially small black businesses, don't have marketing budgets, and our voices, our stories, our products are not put out there because we don't have the appropriate outlets. And so my goal and and my mission is to help small businesses grow and the way that I'm doing that is by giving you a platform by allowing you to come on and be on air here uh, with us on on 1320 AM WCVG The Voice. So before Michelle gets here, I have to do my civic duty. I have to, have to, have to do my civic duty and remind everyone, if you're not registered to vote, please register to vote. Please register to vote. Please register to vote. You know, all too often we talk about our narratives. We get really discouraged about how things are going and what we're not getting in the community. The way that you offset that is you vote. You vote for these policymakers. You vote for legislators who essentially have the uh, the power to change uh, the trajectory of our lives. Now, yesterday, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, one of my quotes is that one, one thing that I posted is it always amazes me when I hear people say things. Now, I know that since the inception of this country, we have fought for equality. I, I know that. Okay. But it always amazes me when I hear people say things like, while black people were fighting for equality, white people were building equity. Did you get that? They say, while black people were fighting for equality, white people were building equity. That's true in a sense for some people, but what people who want to put out phrases like that should do is they should think that there were actually people who were doing both. So there's black people who were fighting for equality, and there's also those same black people, some of those same black people who were building equity at the same time. There were black people who were fighting for equality and building equity at the same time. But sadly, because of where we are, the United States of America, where we are in this day and time, especially uh, since, you know, the way that I, I, I sum this up is after President Obama was in office, I mean, you had some people who were livid that we actually had a black president. Yes, they were livid that we had a black president. And as a result, they are 
being as nasty and hateful as humanly possible. And so we are subjected to systemic racism, systemic injustice, institutional racism like never before. And so those same black people, those same black people who were fighting for equality and building equity at the same time, the people who were able to do so and who had power worked to ensure that if you spoke too loudly about the inequalities, they made sure that they work to destroy your equity or take your equity. And so that is why it's important to vote. This year's election, now yesterday, again, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, I am Kelly Prather with an I, K-E-L-L-I, Prather, P-R-A-T-H-E-R. For those of you who follow me on Facebook and who live in Hamilton County, uh, you saw that I posted a slate of uh, judges who are running to be elected to the Hamilton County Common Pleas Court. Uh, my prayer is that you will take this opportunity to look over those judges, to check out their websites, and to support them if you want to create the changes that we need to see as it relates to a person's ability to take your equity and a person's ability to suppress your vote, vote your voice, or not give you an opportunity to, to, to speak out against the injustices. So if you are, and let me just say this, I have been talking a lot about ex- felon voting rights, ex-felon voting rights. So if you have a checker pass, if you are a felon, hey, Bobby Michelle Beans in the studio, if you are an ex-felon, uh, you do have voting rights. So, so many times people are returning citizens come home and they think, oh, I can't vote. Uh, I have been um, incarcerated. I've had all of my rights stripped away, that's not accurate. If you're in the state of Ohio, you can vote. If you are in the community, you can vote. If you are in Hamilton County, the Hamilton County Justice Center, River City, or any of the other facilities that are confined, I think the only two in Hamilton County are River City and the Hamilton County Justice Center. If you are in either of those facilities, you can vote. Meaning, if you have not been sentenced or convicted, you can still vote. If you're in a halfway house, you can vote. If you are on electronic monitoring, you can vote. If you're on probation or parole, you can vote. As long as you're in the community, you can vote. So please get registered to vote, uh, especially if there was a judge who did not treat you fairly and you have some concerns, you have a story that you want to tell, you can come on. Kelly keeps you in the know and share your story, and then you can also vote for someone who you think is going to be fair across the board. Now, if you made a mistake, just own up to your mistake and say, hey, I, I was guilty. I'm not going to hold it against this judge because they simply did their job. But if you were treated unfairly in the court system, I want to give you an opportunity to exercise your right to vote or voice your opinion and change your narrative and change the narrative for so many people who are coming behind you and vote that person out. Now, we need to vote some people in and some people out. So vote. Register to vote. You can call 1-888-VOTE-OHIO, 1-888-VOTE-OHIO, and register to vote. You can go to 4700 Smith Road, register to vote, or you can go online to IWillVote.com and register to vote. So, And before I bring on my very special guest, I have to give a very special shout out to the Cincinnati Herald and Eric Kearney of the Greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, African American Chamber of Commerce. Subscribe to the Herald. It's only $30 a year. Join the African American Chamber. You will not regret it. So without further ado, I have my lovely, lovely, lovely guest in the studio. Hey, thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. That is the lovely Bobby, author Bobby Michelle Bean. And uh, Michelle, before you came in, I said that I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about your book, but you have so many other things going on. So I want to give you a chance to talk about that first. All right. Thank so, you. Now, Michelle, Bobby Michelle Bean was on the show this past Tuesday, but because we had some technical difficulties. and It was a little rough. Yeah, it was a little rough. <laughs> really, really rough. It was really rough. I wanted to give her her just due because I don't want to do anything that's going to negatively impact her brand. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. You are so welcome. <laughs> so, Michelle, tell the world, who is Bobby Michelle Bean? Oh, Lord. Bobby Michelle Bean is <laughs> a <laughs> lot of things. First and foremost, most I am a mother. I have a beautiful 18-year-old daughter who is, I guess, a sophomore. I don't know what happened when COVID hit, but I think she's a sophomore in college. <laughs> um, and she is a, 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 a budding filmpreneur. I started a business with her years ago because I saw that entrepreneurial spirit in her and wanted to fuel that. So she has Pamper Me Pretty, and she will soon be launching Plastics, which I'm super excited about, which is her online boutique. So that's my favorite job, my best job. Then I I am also a real estate agent with Yuri Realty, very proud of that. 
Your Realty is a black-owned agency out of Madisonville, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Um, I am the I am the uh, founder of the Ruth Project, which was a call to action for my women. So I know that I started investing in real estate very early, um, in my 20s, and I know what it did for my family, how it allowed me to provide the things that I wanted to for my family, and consequently, when I I, I was a loan officer for 14 years, so when I came over to the real estate side. You know, I was like, well, where are my ladies at? Why were, I know we need to invest in the land as well. Right. So the Ruth Project is about us not gleaning, no longer gleaning in the fields that we're meant to own. And that comes from the story of Ruth in the Bible. Okay. Um, so if, you, if you're not familiar with that story, please open up to the book of Ruth, and it's amazing. Um, but, again, why are we gleaning in the fields that we're meant to own? And with so much turmoil in the land, of course, we know whoever owns the land controls it. Amen. So that is something that is very near and dear to my heart. So it, it's not exclusive to women, but it was a call to action for women to, to provide the resources and the tools necessary for us to, to be able to invest in the land like we need to so that we can save the land, save our children. Um, let's see what else. I'm an entrepreneur, so I also have um, I have um, Table for Two Catering. Oh, I'm sorry. I have Table for Two Catering. I have, uh, again, Pamper Me Pretty. I have Bobby Bean Publishing. Just wrote my, 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 uh, just published my first book, Through Blind Eyes. Yes. Um, so super excited that God has put me in a position to explore many of my talents that I haven't been able to explore outside of. And this was a blessing to my heart as well. I've done productions and musicals and different things for my churches, for the church and schools and different community organizations. And now I'm, I'm, I'm able to take it to the world. And I, I just feel very blessed that you're willing to share your platform with me oh, yes. to kind of introduce Bobby Bean to the world. <laughs> but you can find me at BobbyBean.com, and that'll pretty much tell you everything that you need to know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She is amazing, and I want to keep the, the spotlight on her because it's about Bobby, author Bobby Michelle Bean. Thank today. you so it's not much. about Kelly Prather. <laughs> and, and the one thing I, I said when I came in is this platform is not for me. God didn't put me into radio and, and television broadcasting so that I could be in the spotlight. It's to help other people to Absolutely. get a platform because sadly we don't get, we have our voices suppressed and we right. don't get the platform that we deserve. Right. And for that reason, the world gets to put out whatever narrative they want to about our culture. And we are so much more than that. Absolutely. As evidenced by Bobby Michelle Bean Absolutely. and all that she just says she is. She's <laughs> bomb.com. <laughs> I had, to, I had to let them see my Thank face and let them see that I was saying that. I appreciate okay. it. So, now, um, I know you talked about the Ruth Project, mm -hmm. and Ruth is one of my favorite biblical oh, my characters, goodness. as well as Esther. You know, you yes. have some powerful women. Powerful women of God. Powerful women in the Bible. Absolutely. And so, to hear that that is your baby, you've taken that on, yes. and you have a strong support system behind Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You know, God, that that was God putting people in it place absolutely to, to make was. sure. It absolutely was. You know, and then especially since you were a loan officer prior to becoming a real estate agent or mm -hmm. real estate broker, I mean, this is this is amazing. That was God orchestrating you and, and preparing you to do all that He has for you to do. I appreciate that, and my passion is to increase home ownership in our community. If you don't know already, Cincinnati, I believe African Americans make up about forty four percent of the population, yeah. but only on fourteen percent of the land, and that's a problem. That so. Um, we do Tuesday talks, myself and Stephen Alexander, who is a major part of the Ruth Project, major supporter of the Ruth Project. Um, Stephen Alexander is a broker at Uri Realty along with Anita Alexander. We do Tuesday talks where we give free information about home ownership, investing. Um, I also have to shout out Seal Watkins, um, who is doing amazing things at his church on Forest Avenue. And that is the Church of the Living God on Forest Avenue. He get, he's a major part of the Ruth Project. Um, he's always lent his time and his energy in the space as well. He and Steve teach the investment classes. Um, and then I also have to give a shout out to Qatar Relaford at Huntington Bank who has sponsored the program. And he has great programs for um, uh, women of color as well, anyone of color. But his, his passion was to increase home ownership in that fashion the same way mine was so it was just a great collaboration so I am thankful to everybody but again Tuesday talks 
are on um, Stephen Alexander's page live. It's on my page, Bobby Michelle Bean on Facebook. You can go to Bobby Bean at Yuri Realty and see the Tuesday Talks. But all of this is just free information that we give regularly to the community because we want to see that increase. We want to see a change. Yes, and, and like you said, people don't realize that if you actually own a parcel, you own property within the state, you own the state. Absolutely. You have a stake in the game and you, Absolutely. you say, and that's why the powers that be fight so hard when they're looking to redevelop or gentrify the community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they want to own the state. And so, you know, I thank God for the likes of Syl Watkins, mm -hmm. for Steve Alexander, who mm -hmm. I've known forever, for mm -hmm. Anita Alexander, mm -hmm. uh, worthy matron, <laughs> Absolutely. Anita Alexander, Absolutely. and um, Bobby Michelle Bean, and so many other realtors. Jerry Isham. I have to say Jerry Absolutely. Isham because he was one of my original realtors, too. <laughs> you got some people out here, some powerhouses who are working to make sure that you have a roof over your head and you Absolutely. have something that you can pass down through the generations and Absolutely. leave for your children. So mm -hmm. I believe your co-author, Christina, Christina is on the line. Hey, Wonderful. Hey, Christina, how you doing? Good, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Christina. Thank you so much for calling. I'm so excited about your book, oh. Through Blind Eyes. And, Mich and Michelle, or Bobby Bean, author of Bobby <laughs> Michelle Bean, uh, she, she she wanted to gift me a book. And I said, you know what? No. You ladies I work really, really hard. That. And I wanted to invest in my own book and I encourage other people that. to invest in the book. So thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you for thank you for for supporting us. That Absolutely. that means the world. Absolutely, you it are, does. Yeah, you are so welcome. <laughs> you know what? That's what we have to do. We have to support one another, mm -hmm. um, and we have to stop looking out for the hookup or a handout. You ladies invest right. a lot in this book, and so the way that we support each other is just by telling, like, spreading the word, like telling, sharing our names. So if you share my name, you share my platform, we'll 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 get to where we're trying to go. So thanks, Absolutely. thanks again. Thank you so much. Yeah, and and by supporting the book. Um, um, I, we, I, my, the, the whole idea for writing the book was to support the community. Amen. Um, I want to build community centers in our communities. Yes. So. And Christine it, is out in Trenton, a, New Jersey. It's going to be a complete circle. Nice, nice, nice. So you're out of Trenton, New Jersey, Christine? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. What a blessing. Now, I lived in New York City uh, from 2005 until 2009, and for, I guess, maybe six months, I lived in East Orange, New Jersey, which is close to Trenton, so I'm familiar with, with that area, so you're in a good spot. Right. No, yes, I, but I, you know what? Um, Trenton is actually going through a redevelopment right now. Okay. Um, they're, trying to, they're trying to gentrify it. But I, honestly, the um, African Americans in the Trenton community are not having it. They're buying up all their land, and if anybody's going to gentrify it, they're going to gentrify it. I know. And I want to be a part of that. Absolutely. Yes, and you should be a part of it. And make sure you reach out to uh, Senator Cory Booker because I know that he was mayor of was he mayor of East Orange uh, East or, or he was mayor of one of the cities. Yeah. He was Newark, New York. Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. And he is really, really passionate about community and economic redevelopment. So you want to make sure you reach out to him and see if he can support your efforts, too. So I, I sure, as soon as I, as soon as I get everything, <laughs> you know, to where I can now demand that this happens. Because um, I went to the mayor of Trenton and he basically told me, good luck. Yes. So I, have to, I know I have to make a voice for myself. I know I have to petition. I know I have to get the community behind me. And I know it's going to be a long, hard road. But yes. Cory Booker is on my list of people to contact. <laughs> yes, Corey, you should contact Cory and also contact Vernon Pullins. Vernon is a, a, con a congressman, or I'm sorry, a councilman in, I believe, Newark, New Jersey now. So I'll get the his uh, contact information and you can reach out to him too. So he's a... He's a friend. He's my best friend's cousin who was just elected oh, a couple years ago. So I got people up there who I can name one. That's what I'm talking about, Kelly. Get the hook up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that. network. That's what we have to do. Yes, his it's name about is, network. His name is Vernon Pullins. He's on Facebook. So I'll reach out to Vernon and get his contact information, and then I'll put you in contact with him too, okay? Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Now, I want to give you all a chance to talk about your book. So I did have a chance to read some of the passages. And what I appreciate about it, Christine and uh, Michelle, is that it is biblically based, but at the same time, it's real life. It's about yes. reality, too. Yes. Uh, I, I, 
I appreciate the fact that you were vulnerable and shared your experiences mm -hmm. because what you did is you empowered me. I mean, I was my spirit was stirred in such a positive way, and I was just so pumped up about sharing my personal story because you know when we share our stories and we just listen, if we li listen intentionally, we realize our our stories are the same. We all have some of us have the same stories. It's just we're not sharing it, and so right. the thing is, a lot of times when we go through things, we think we're going through it alone, but no, we're all we're we just have to get together and share our stories and, and work together to heal uh, the community or to facilitate our healing journey. So I don't want to keep talking. I want to give you all a chance to talk about your book. So tell me, how did how did this come about? Um, okay, so um, I was, uh, like I said, I wanted to build a community center. I developed the community center. I, you know, the Lord said, build it and I bless it. I'm like, Lord, I got $12 in my pocket. How am I supposed to build a building? Right. Like, for real. I know you're a miracle worker, but come on, I'm, you, I'm on here on earth. So he was like, it's in your house, it's in your house. So I'm looking at paintings, I'm looking all over, and I'm like, what is in my house? And then the next thing you know, I have my story. And the funny thing is, Michelle had posted a, a story about a basketball game that she had played in. And when I was reading the basketball, when I was reading it, I can vision her, you know, playing this basketball game. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Michelle to write my story. I okay. called Michelle up. With, and she didn't even hesitate. It, like, you know how some people be like, are you sure you want to do this? Or, I don't know, Christine. You know, that's a lot. She was like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, absolutely. It was, I, I considered it an honor and a privilege. Um, I, was, I was there for a major portion of the book. <laughs> we were friends in college. Okay. And it didn't matter how, you know, the mouth separated us. Whenever we reconnected, it was just, just still that same love, you know. So I, I considered it an honor and a privilege to be asked to do that. Okay. And at the same time that she asked me, it was on my heart to start writing about women surviving life. Yes. And so it just fit. I was like, "Yes, let's go, <laughs> let's go." And um, and and it, it's just been amazing ever since. And because she's so near and dear to my heart, you know, God worked through both of us, yes. of course, and and put on my heart that I I wanted this to be a healing process for mm -hmm. her in doing this because I know what she's been going through and so I was happy to hear that it was and is and continues to be a healing process for her mm -hmm. so it's just been a blessing yeah this has been a blessing and I think that so many other women across the nation across the world will be blessed by Absolutely. your book I mean like I said it will I'm, this book will empower women to share their stories and not be afraid because a lot of times what happens to us in life it's not our fault you know we, right. didn't, we didn't ask for this right. life especially as it relates to marriage and relationships because in, in, in marriage and we We've all been married before. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, we have. In marriage, you know that you make a promise to God and mm -hmm. you try to become one. Yeah. And sadly, like you were saying on your podcast, see, I'm a fan. I'm a fan already, Christine. <laughs> I was listening to the podcast. On your podcast. Oh, you're Oh, thank yes, you. I, 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 shared, I shared that podcast. I shared the live feed on my page. So I pay attention to thank everything you that so you all much. are doing. But in, in becoming one, sadly, we tend to lose ourselves mm -hmm. just for the sake of our marriage marriage yeah. and that is that's heartbreaking when it, it ends suddenly mm -hmm. you know so I mean I, I just think that again this book the fact that it touches on domestic violence is going to encourage so many women and men and because some men do suffer from domestic violence absolutely to come forward and share their story absolutely so you, you know, know um, honestly before the book was written I honestly believe that I was the only one like I knew that there were women getting beat like, like, you know, the husbands come home and get beat. Yes. But I really felt like I was the only one in my situation. Wow. You know what? You yeah. know, like, oh. I, I'm like, nobody else is putting up with this. Nobody else is going through this. Right. <laughs> right. And you know what? A lot of times, Christine and, and Michelle... I, I know that we are taught that what goes on in our house stays, stays in our in house, house. Mm -hmm. and so we yeah. suffer in silence. Yep. But the, you know, the challenge for us now is no, you don't have to tolerate that. You, you have to tell. You have to have someone who you trust enough to speak out and get 
to a safe place because mm -hmm. that's really unhealthy, especially Absolutely. if you have babies. Absolutely. If, if you have children in that situation, that is extremely dangerous. And mm -hmm. if you don't hold the individual who's abusing you accountable, accountable. then mm -hmm. they're more likely to abuse the children Absolutely. in the situation too. So Absolutely. we got to speak up and speak out. And again, I don't want to keep talking, but I want to just say this really quick. Now that we're in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and, and Michelle and I have talked about this, there are so many people who are in abusive relationships now. Mm -hmm. And just imagine being four to stay in with your abuser so if you're in that situation there are resources uh for people to get out of those situations and i think last night during the podcast christine you 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 mentioned that uh, people can get out you can get out of those situations so i want mm -hmm. you all to talk about that talk about like an escape plan or what what would your recommendation be to anybody who's in that type of a situation <laughs> Okay, my recommendation, if you're in an abusive situation where this man is beating you every day, you don't even have time to pack your bag. You just go straight to, to the police station, tell them what your prob what, what's going on, and, and, the, and, and see, here in Trenton, um, if I went to the police station, they're going to call Women's Space, Women's Space is going to come and get me, and they're going to come and take me out of that situation. Each state is different, and from what I'm seeing in a lot of this domestic violence groups is some states don't even have that. Um, which is a huge problem. Yes. So if you can't do that, if you can't go to the police and they don't have a woman's space and you have no money and you have nowhere to go, I would go to a shelter. Yes. I, would just, I would. I would pack my stuff and just go to a shelter because if that man is just beating you just to beat you, like he does not love you, he does not want, he, he's trying to kill you, but he's doing it slowly. Yes. So I would rather a woman just run out the door but after the last you know at, just run out the door right now and just go to a shelter because i guarantee you once you get from under him you your life will start to come together and i really wish like i i, I really want this part of my life to be a movie because i really want women to see that once i got from up under him my life started to get so much better and because i because i have a healthy mind now, you know, like I can focus and I can do things. So that's why I, t I will tell a woman before I would have never told a woman to, um, to just pack her stuff and, you know, just to, to run out the door. But now I'm like, girl, you, like you have to. And I guarantee once you get from up under that man, your life will start to get so much better. I now see. you have women who are in my situation where you are in love and you're not getting beat every day. But, you know, y'all are fighting, he's cheating, he's, you know, he's abusing you in so many ways, financially, mentally, physically. But you do have your good times, and you keep hoping for those good times to stay. I'm here to tell you they're not. Right. I'm here to tell you that if you want that man to change, not to say that he is, but you have a better possibility of him changing with you leaving. Because by you staying, you are telling this man that what he is doing to you is okay. Amen. And, 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 and he's not, why would he change if what he's doing to you is okay? But as soon as you extract yourself from that situation, and if he really wants to be with you, which nine times out of ten when they do this to you, they really don't want to be with you. But, some, but you know, there's that one chance that a man is like, okay, you know what, i got to get my stuff together because I really do love her. I just didn't know how to love her. And that's what a lot of women in my situation hold on to. And I'm saying you can hold on to that, but you got to leave. You, gotta, you have to hold on to that in your own apartment. Amen. Okay, so, and Michelle, what would your recommendations or what would you tell a woman in that situation? I would tell one, for one, and, and prayerfully, they're not isolated. Mm -hmm. I know on the podcast, Chris said something that kind of shook me a little bit. Um, she said that she didn't have any, she didn't think she had anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how long, how far apart we are, she could have called me. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that, that when we get ourselves in those situations, mm -hmm. we start to believe the things that uh, oftentimes the, uh, the, the abuser is telling us, you good for nothing, don't nobody want you but me, blah, blah, yada, yada, you know, all, and, and we start to believe that to yes. the point where we even think our family doesn't want us, our friends don't want us, the church doesn't, but, but it's not true. So That's the right. first thing I would say is tell Tell yourself you're worthy of love and that you still have love. Amen. I don't care how far you separated yourself from it. Somebody's still praying for you. Amen. Find that person yeah. that's praying for you. They might have an option for you. Um, they might have a place for you to lay your head. Um, 
But don't allow yourself to be isolated to the point where you feel you have no one. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a prerequisite, too. Um, now, if you are in a situation like, for example, um, some of the, the uh, responders came in and they said that, you know, women for women and um, the, the uh, Bethany House are mm -hmm. options for women in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, and so and then, of course, the church. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, unfortunately, every church won't do that yeah. unfortunately mm -hmm. but there are churches that really are about love really are about god really are about christ mm -hmm. that you can seek help from as well mm -hmm. i would also say be mindful of your mental state as well as that person's mental state there are real chemical balance unbalances that go on in our systems in our bodies mm -hmm. so just be mindful of the mental health state of both parties involved okay. and and don't be afraid to seek out help for that as well especially okay especially if you're not going to leave. Amen. All right, so you know what? I'm definitely going to have to have you ladies back on the show. Uh, real quick, tell us, where can we get your book, Through Blind Eyes? Through Blind Eyes is available on Amazon. Um, you can go to bobbybean.com because that's easy to remember. <laughs> There's a link right there on the bottom um, that gives you the link to, to the Amazon Through Blind Eyes. But if you search it on Amazon, it's Through Blind Eyes. You can put in Bobby Bean or Christine Mayo, and it'll, it'll come up. All right, well, thank you so much, Christine. Thank you so much, Michelle, and thank you all so much for listening to Kelly Keeps You on the Know. We're going to log off the, the, the show, but we're still live on Facebook. So thank you all. As always, I leave you with grace, faith, and peace. God bless. Have a wonderful day, and I will speak to you on Tuesday. Thank okay. you, Kelly. You are so welcome. All right, so now we are still live. You've been listening to Kelly Keeps You in the Know. Kelly can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Kelly is also a TV sensation. Make sure you watch the hit television shows, Catching Up with Kelly, and Kelly's commentary on Spectrum Cable TV. Check out the Catching Up with Kelly Facebook page. To catch or book Kelly Prather for your event, send an email to kellyprather1 at gmail.com. That's Kelly with an I, K-E-L-L-I, Prather, P as in Paul, R-A, T as in Tom, H-E-R, 1 at gmail.com. Or call Kelly personally at 513-258-9586. Again, that's 513-258-9586. Listen again next week on 1320 AM WCBG, The Voice. God bless.